Another framing plan uh, concept here. So when choosing a framing plan, number five here, uh, for a steel structure, the engineer offers four different potential layouts. Since you are concerned about efficiency and economical use of material, uh, which, uh, which would you choose? Uh, assume it's an office and sort of typical corrugated steel decking. So let's look at B and D first. Uh, so we look down here at B uh, and we have a 60 foot dimension here uh, and then 40 foot dimension there. So we have beams at 60 foot spans and girders at 40 foot spans. Well, that would be really great. That would be awesome because there'd be no columns uh, and it would be uh, easy to put a building in around there. But it's not gonna be economical and efficient. Uh, typical sort of sweet spot of steel framing is gonna be in the kind of 30 foot to 40 foot. Uh, sometimes you'll see people say 35 foot to 45 foot. Um, so you kind of get the idea 35 to 40 uh, is sort of the, that range of um, column spacing is going to work very efficiently with steel. As soon as I get down to like 20 foot spacing, there may be reasons why I do 20 foot. There's, there's all kinds of reasons why we, we don't do things in the most efficient way. Uh, but when we uh, get down to like 20 foot spacings, uh, it's just a little less efficient. The amount of steel I need for the columns and all the uh, footings that that requires uh, it's just the numbers when, they, when you work them out make that uh, less efficient. So that's one of the issues that's striking against D. Uh, so uh, not enough columns in B and probably too many columns uh, too close set together in D. Uh, the other issue is it's uh, for an office occupancy it would just be not great to have columns every 20 feet. It's hard to fit the offices in in that scenario. Uh, the other issue with D is um, steel decking. We're imagining that there's steel decking spanning across from beam to beam, and the shortest dimension I have here is 20 feet. And steel decking generally, you can make it span different dimensions, but generally, especially in terms of the exam, it's gonna be in probably the six to 10 foot range. Might be up to 12 or even 15 feet in certain scenarios. It might be down to three or four feet spacing uh, in other scenarios. But it's kind of, the, again, the sweet spot is going to be around 6 to 10, maybe 12 feet. Uh, and so uh, it would be very expensive corrugated decking that would span 20 full feet in uh, this whole direct dimension. So uh, B and D are not right. So then the question is, all right, which is it between A and C? And uh, the trick on this is A and C are very similar uh, except switched, you know, sort of polar opposites, if you will, of each other. So we look at C, I have beams here uh, on going spanning from girder to girder, and then I have girder there and a girder there. Uh, so if you think about each beam loading, the area for each beam that it's carrying is roughly something like that, and the area for each uh, girder it's carrying is actually pretty darn massive, right? because I have short beams and I have long girders. So what that's gonna mean is I'm gonna have uh, a, a girder that's gonna be very, very deep and then a beam that's coming into it that's gonna be a little tiny beam uh, that comes into it. There's gonna be a big discrepancy between those two. And it's gonna be a very expensive girder system. You're, you're putting huge amounts of money into the girders, but also you're making it more difficult, less economical, for moving uh, ductwork around the building, for having space for all those other elements that, that you want to have up in the interstitial space. Uh, and so it's just considered a not smart way to go. Uh, the exam will always lean towards, unless it gives you a reason to go against this, it will always lean towards the idea of having a nice long beam and a short girder so that that way the depth of those uh, steel members, those presumably wide flanges, end up sort of equalizing. So you'll end up having a situation where I've got my girder uh, and my beam coming into it is probably pretty close to that same depth. Uh, that's going to be more efficient for all the interstitial stuff like the duct work, but it's also going to be a more efficient in just straight out uh, weight of the, of the steel and the sort of economy of the, of the process. And so this is allowing us to get sort of the best of both worlds uh, uh, as best as we can out of the four choices that we've got. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then um, the, the spanning of the uh, de decking on that is uh, kind of below 10, so easily works uh, in the typical steel decking spanning.